personally haven't found one until we get over here. As long as you don't step on it, it's going to be good. Thank you. Garlic harvest day. We have a beautiful morning, but chilly. I think it was like under 39 degrees last night. I mean, look at those. They're beauties. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it. Music's usually like, just like, bigger, freaking crazy. They're really deep, so watch out. Well, because I never... Oh my gosh, that's a nice one though, huh? This is a nice variety is all I can say to you. Huh. See how the, you can tell by the thick stalks. Anything with a weak... Is there any more in here? Sight. No, we got them all, right? Whoa, check oh, out no, this no. one. Look at that big one. Well, great harvest so far. Things are going good. The ground is extremely wet, like really wet from all this rain we've been having. And the garlic this year seems like it was planted a little bit deeper. So they're kind of hard to get out. I pulled the stalk off one. Things are going good though. It's looking good. Oh, we got another tag right here. What is this one called? Chestnut red? Chestnut red. So that's a, that's a good one. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this one's... You gotta use the trowel for this one. Yeah, no, for that one you gotta use the trowel. Use the trowel on these really soft ones. If you want to do that, I can you know start. What? I'm just gonna freaking dig them because I don't know where you they are. You are just gonna dig it? Well, I'm gonna at least dig to where I see the bulb. Oh, look, this is a really promising one, huh? You can't be able to hear them every day. The bees, yeah. Yeah, they like the nasturtiums a lot. They're on anything that has pollen. I don't think there's a lot of stuff. Not pollen, but nectar. I don't think there's a lot of stuff left. Hey, babe, this year though, I didn't mess around. I got all big garlics. Hell yeah. I only got two different varieties. Isn't it crazy how much of a difference dry soil will make? If it's just dry, you can just rip it out. I know. Yeah. Uh. Look, I grew this one for you. It's one bulb. So I realized this morning that our garlic has actually been in the ground for over 10 months. Pretty crazy. We planted the little cloves, which have now turned into bulbs. And it's been, it's been a little over 10 months. Every year it's different depending upon the weather. This year it is ready late. Some of the ways you can tell when garlic's ready is by the leaves turning colors. So they'll start to kind of get yellow and wispy looking like this one. And there's some rule, like you want five leaves on the garlic to look like that. And that's usually when it's ready. Generally, I go by kind of scratching up around a bulb and seeing what the bulb's telling me. This is in its prime. So this is perfect example of when you would want to harvest one. There's actually still some green if you wait like this one till it's all yellow, you'll end up with some of the cloves actually separating. So this one's not gonna be good for storage, but that's okay because it is still gonna be delicious for fresh eating. It just kind of split apart a little bit. We're only about halfway done. We have about 200 heads that we're gonna be harvesting today. Oh. <laughs> Every one of our garlics could look like these. I would be thrilled. This is a beauty right here. I did label the, the garlics when we planted them, but I've kind of lost some of the labels and I'm not sure which varieties are what. However, we have been growing several different kinds over the years and I have kind of come to the conclusion that there's three I really like. There's one I just love and the name of it is Music. It's my favorite hardneck variety and German, white, and there's Polish hardneck are other two varieties that do consistently really well here. And they give us these huge bulbs with huge cloves. That's what Eric and I love because if we go through the effort of peeling garlic, which we do every night, you know, we usually are after like six cloves so we, we use a lot of garlic this is definitely the kind of garlic for us maybe only three four cloves it's pretty nice i think this may be german german white five cloves of beauty dang that's a nice one that is a nice one five big cloves that's what you want look at this two big ones even that's good honestly that's good Ah, look at that. Yeah, it's a nice, nice one. Oh, I should have let you harvest this one, huh? Look. <laughs> yeah, I harvested plenty of big ones.
I almost forgot I had it back until I stood up. <laughs> okay. A lot of garlic this year, which is awesome. We use garlic for pretty much every meal, like lunch and dinner that we make. So this is gonna be great. All we're doing is bunching them up in little bunches. I don't know, I got maybe like 10 in each one. And we're gonna leave them outside for a little while, hanging up to dry. We got a nice few days forecasted in the weather. There's a lot of bees in here. I left the high tunnel open yesterday to kind of vent it out. We have really sunny days coming up, so the bees found the sunflowers, which is why I haven't taken them down. They really need to go. They're in our way. We're going to be start, starting to harvest a lot out of here, but it's kind of hard to take them down when the bees are, you know, on their one, last hurrah in here, trying to get everything they can before winter. On another note, we have something very exciting to show you in here. Check this out, we grew corn, actual corn. This is one that I've been monitoring all season with anxiety to see if it was gonna work out and it actually worked out. And so this is actually a hair past its prime. These are probably due to be picked like two weeks ago. And the way you can tell is if you just prick them. Yeah, you can totally tell. So what happens is when it's clear liquid that comes out, that's a little bit early. You wanna wait until it's like a milky liquid, which it was a little while ago. Now it's just chunky. So they're a little bit past their prime, but you know what, they're still gonna be, they're still gonna be delicious. And I am so excited. It is the tiniest corn ever, but we've been trying this for four years and this is the most successful we've been. So pretty sweet stuff. We're gonna have a celebration tonight. Check this one. We had to take a quick break to pet the cat. Not all these pollinated perfect, but it's really not a problem. I'm pretty happy with how they pollinated being inside the high tunnel. We've tried it before where it didn't work out like that. Eric just did some quick research and we are going to be freezing all of these. We're gonna be shucking them, blanching them, and then putting them in like vacuum sealed bags and freezing them for the winter. Do you like corn too? Remember I had? Oh wow, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Remember we made the decision to plant a little bit less of these? I had probably another eight we could have planted here. Yeah. Yep. See, but they would have went right here where the green beans are. Yeah, it's pretty bad back here. So you see how the tomatoes are falling? I need to, those are the ones I'm gonna cut, cut down. Thank you. Okay, don't lose your little things. Mm. These are nice. These are ancho peppers. Errol's got an awesome dinner plan for tonight and we're gonna use these peppers. I was just gonna pick these two, but we realized it is time to harvest peppers. So we're harvesting peppers today. We probably got, I don't know, maybe half of our plants left. Oh man, we're barely catching some of these in time. Yeah, nice purple bell pepper. Oh my gosh, look at these. Look at these. That's candy cane. That's candy cane. Look at that. Because it has green and red stripes. Wow. I don't see the green stripes, but that's awesome. See how it has like the little stripes? Yeah, that's a beauty. Drop a leaf in there though. What a crazy looking pepper. Oh my God. That one's got a curve on it. That was probably the most productive Serrano. Oh my gosh, they're still coming. Look at all those, one plant. Man, these are some really cool looking like real thin finger like peppers. These are a hot one and another one that is really awesome. This is a ghost pepper that Ariel grew up in Alaska, which is amazing. This is an early maturing one that someone sent us and it works up here. We got one really nice red one, some green ones, and we got like some yellow ones in here. I'm actually gonna be careful with these because these are starting to hurt my throat. That's how hot they are. But what we like to do with really hot peppers is I'll take a, th a thread and needle and I'll just go right through the stem 
and I'll just stack them up, do like 10 on a string, and we'll hang them up and they dry. And then you can like crumble them up and use them later on. These are really good in a uh, salmon coconut curry. Exciting. Something else we're working on today is going through our tomatoes. This is never really that fun. I let them get completely out of control this year. I did no pruning and we haven't even walked over to this side of the high tunnel. So it's pretty atrocious right now. Uh, I already found a little bit of mold. Doesn't surprise me. We don't have good ventilation in here and our plants are spaced super close. But for the most part, everything's looking good. So we're making the decision to harvest these. We pretty much always have to harvest them when they're green and they will ripen inside the cabin. All in all, it was a pretty good year for peppers that uh, we really didn't have any problems with them. And same thing, I think for the most part with the tomatoes. So I'm pretty excited that heat helped us out. Okay. Whoa. That's a the? double, but look at how big oh, okay. they are. I'm gonna have to see what kind that is. It's huge. It's huge. I'm gonna make a fried green, what is it called? Green, yeah! Green tomato, tomato pie? pie? Let's have one tonight. Oh yeah, let's make tomato pie. I guess tomorrow night since we have dinner for tonight. Okay, well, I think that will do. Worked pretty hard and it's warm out here, warmer than I would like, actually. We're gonna head over and make some dinner. Well, we are doing things big tonight and we are making arepa con queso, which I have never made before, but they are like these little corn pancakes or corn cakes. Freaking fantastic though. This dough actually has a bunch of cheese in it. We have like a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese. I'm just rolling these out right now or patting them out. And then we're gonna be stuffing them with more cheese and peppers. So this is gonna be delicious. I already know it. So I'm fully expecting some cheese to be oozing out of here. So it's not gonna be a problem. I think our corn's almost done too. <laughs> that looks really good. Cut one of these little cakes in half. Oh my gosh. Wow, it's one of the best things I've ever eaten in my life. Oh my gosh. It's a corn, corn flour. And those peppers, whole different level. We haven't had corn in a long time. I don't remember the last time we had it. I'm looking forward to this. Got a little salt and pepper butter and parsley on top. Let's give this a go. It's not overly sweet, but it has like meat. The kernels are like really meaty. That's good. I'm formulating my thoughts. Definitely, yeah, the kernels are thick. I can't say it's the most flavorful actual like corn kernel I've ever tried, but the toppings and the way it was cooked is really good so it's it's overall it's very tasty that was really good. delicious so crispy and cheesy
Well, it is certainly fall now. It seems like it arrived overnight. It is chilly out there and our bog is turning all sorts of colors. It's like a nice golden color when I was out there last night. Eric and I are working on something new and exciting right now. We are roasting some of our ancho peppers and a few of the other chili peppers that we grew and we're going to be preserving them that way. So we're roasting them and then we're going to be putting them in the freezer. Yesterday we worked really hard. We got a lot of stuff done. We got all of the hot peppers strung up and then we also put all of our bell peppers and other various peppers away in the freezer. We put them in little vacuum sealed bags and that's just an awesome way to have them during the winter. Once these are done, I'm going to be putting these in vacuum sealed bags as well. We've already braided our onions for winter storage, but I saved these so I could do a little example for you. Eric and I didn't have the greatest harvest this year, but we did get onions, so I can't complain. And not only was it a wet year, which is never good, but not all of our onions actually folded over. So what happens when you're curing onions is you want them to fold over and form like a seal and be really dry. That's awesome for storage and it's awesome for braiding them but sometimes when they have really thick stems they don't dry perfectly so this one's going to work but our other ones that weren't eligible we're actually going to be processing those today these have been drying for about a week and a half and they are ready to be basically braided so i'm going to show you a new technique that i learned i've been braiding these like the traditional way where you kind of french braid them and i've never really been pleased with how they look the other day, Eric and I looked up another technique. It uses a string and it turned out awesome. They look incredible. So that's my new favorite way to do that. And what you have to do is take your onion tops and actually trim them. Kind of odd. So I'm going to do that to all of these right here. Okay, so we're going to start with a string, a pretty long piece, probably like a foot and a half or so. And we're gonna tie a little knot, like a loop right there. When you're doing it this way, it helps to have super dry onions and or cured. The other way you can kind of do it when the stalks are a little bit flexible still. So I'm gonna just hang that on a little nail I have. You're probably gonna think this is really easy, but I actually had a very difficult time learning to do this. Eric had to show me. So we've got our loop here, right? And we've got an onion, the roots are trimmed, they're nice and dry, and then the top, I left maybe like three inches. So I'm gonna take the first one, and I'm gonna go underneath the string, and I'm gonna wrap around the left side in a downward fashion, and then we're just gonna pull that down, just like that. Kind of fold it so it stays. And we are literally gonna repeat that process for the whole string. So you just stick it underneath again, go underneath, kind of hold it tight, pull it down, We've got two onions on there. The string does twist the more you add them, so you just gotta keep making sure you're doing it on the right side. In this case, it's the left side. So we're gonna be, same thing, adding one more, pulling down. At this point, I can start to kind of organize them. When I'm actually pulling each onion down, I'm not specific on which way it has to go, like clockwise or counterclockwise. I just make sure that I'm actually putting it on that left side, if that makes any sense. So, And it turns out beautiful. I was so happy with the way they look. They even look really good. They're not really clean. Normally you'd clean these up a little more, but because we had that wet weather, I can't. I just don't have enough layers on them to, to do that. Wow, that already looks really nice. Okay, that was our last our last onion, and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You can just spin it around, and we're going to hang this with the rest of them. We are headed outside because we are making onion jam, but hopefully, hopefully you found this useful if you're braiding onions. All right, we've got our herbs and onions. We're starting on our onions, getting ready for onion jam. We made this last year. It's fantastic. Still have a teeny tiny bit left and that's because I didn't know where it was in the house. So otherwise it would be gone. It's delicious. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, 
We already pre-chopped some onions and we've got to get a lot more done and I'm going to start working on our herbs. All right, Ariel already chopped up a bunch of onions, actually. She's got two gallons worth. These are frozen, and we're gonna start cooking these down. We're gonna cook them in mainly olive oil, and I threw a little cube of butter in there. Okay. I really like an eclectic mix of onions right here. That smells good already, Eric. Huh, oh, it's like you're, like you're cooking up a real feast for us. We're getting there. Can you smell that? Yeah. This is all the onions you got for me, is this crate? Unless you want to use those little ones inside. No, I'd rather... I like fresh onions. That's what best. I was thinking you wanted to save them for. Oh no. Lost to soul. Our onions have been cooking for about half an hour now in that butter and olive oil mixture and then we chopped up those herbs this year. Last year I didn't do that, I wanted to do that this year so I'm excited about that. I'm going to combine both of these and this is not just onions actually, it is shallots as well. We've got sweet onions in here and a bunch of red onions too. Okay, it's now time to add the vinegars and you can put whatever vinegar you want. Some people put wine. We are going to stick with balsamic and red wine vinegar today. I don't know quite how much I'm using. I'm probably only gonna be using maybe like a cup and a half, two cups in total. The only other thing we have to add is some brown sugar and honey. Brown sugar and then we added honey, but this is a honey we've had sitting around for a little while and we didn't really know what to do with it and it's chocolate honey. So it's honey and chocolate powder. Sounded absolutely delicious in this onion jam. While the onion jam is cooking down, we're canning up our kimchi. Ariel fermented this about two weeks ago. We got eight done, that was one batch. We got a lot of kimchi we're gonna have this year. Probably gonna run at least two more batches. We had to make some fresh bread to try out our onion jam. We're gonna get this sliced up and Eric's gonna toast it up for us. Wow, that's good. Oh my gosh, burn this bread. We're gonna try some with kimchi too. Big ol'. I'm pretty sure kimchi is my favorite topping, canned food of all time. I'm trying to think of what mine would be. Salmon's my favorite canned food, or chili maybe, but that's a good topping. Oh yeah, those are hot. Oh yeah, see that? So much tang. We're gonna get our onion jam back on the heat and into some jars. We're gonna be using half pints. And I think we let it go, we let it go a really long time, probably maybe like an hour and a half this time around. So it mm -hmm. looks, it looks perfect. It's really good this year. It is. How many can we fit in this one? 14, I believe. 
Oh, one. Okay, bottoms up. We're just about all done with our canning today. The onion jam turned out awesome. Really excited for it this year. We water bath that for 15 minutes. Kimchi looks great and I even had time to do some jelly that I've been wanting to do. I was able to harvest some flowers, last minute flowers from the garden. I scoured looking for clovers and violas. That's mainly what I was looking for, but I had to sub in a few other little flowers. So that's in the water bath now. We're almost done with that. Lots more canning to do, still a lot more in the garden. We're just trying to get everything wrapped up before winter. We hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you next time. So, are those bugs messing with you? Are they messing with your bow? He really enjoys being in the garden, huh? Bow. Why are you so sad all the time, dude? How would you do this scene? All the time. How am I even supposed to get in there? You gotta crawl, baby. You gotta crawl control? You know what I realized this year? We didn't harvest any of our beans. You know why, though? Because we couldn't. Ow! Get her out of here. She doesn't belong in the show. Nice. Wow. Look at your teeth. So beautiful. Cheesing. That's the same color as your teeth, too. Mm. I really will not listen to that. It's hot. <laughs> oh, look at this. The Cuban oranginos in here. I'm going to be seriously honest. I completely forgot about that. Oh, I just pulled out. It's molding in there. He's fine. He's fine. No, look at how good he's doing. I know. Pull him out.